today, of course, we're talking about the Trinity and we're closing up our sermon series with the Holy Spirit. So just a little bit more about me. If you've known me at all, you know, you know this, but I was raised in a relatively traditional Southern Baptist church. Um, love the church. It's a great church. My parents are, are here right now. They, they still attend that church. Uh, and so just a phenomenal church. But we, Southern Baptists, are not particularly known for our anticipation of what the Holy Spirit might do. Uh, you know, we're not out there uh, uh, it, with a great expectation of the Holy Spirit. So then I started to think, who, who might on the pastoral staff have been good to preach this sermon? Uh, you know, um, Pastor Mark, maybe, he, was, he went through charismania in the 70s, like full-on Jesus revolution, Holy Spirit knocking you over and stuff and, uh, and, and awesome stuff. Or maybe even Pastor Peter, uh, his dad started the biggest charismatic church um, in Scotland and still sitting there today. And so I thought maybe one of those, but I actually picture in my head these guys sitting around at the beginning of the year when they plan this, like, you know, it'd be hilarious if we gave the Holy Spirit to Jim the Baptist. It's like putting John the Baptist in charge of spritz baptisms. Um, so anyway, I am very excited to do it. I don't know if a meeting like that took place, but I am happy that uh, they chose me because this has really pushed me and, and made me think on a new level. Um, we're going to start with our basic slides here. The Trinity is known as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is definitely the most neglected of the persons of the body or the the triune God. The Holy Spirit is left out. Not necessarily left out, but it's just, uh, you, we just don't talk about, it, about them all that much because, but the Holy Spirit is a critical part of the Trinity. And so by the end of uh, my sermon today, I'm sure you'll fully understand the Trinity, no problem. Um, uh, and hope, but hopefully you'll definitely have a greater and a higher expectation of the Holy Spirit. And then the four foundations of the Trinity. I don't know why, but I think that's a hilarious line. There's four of a trinity, but whatever. I'm a nerd, I guess. Uh, but anyway, there is one God who coexists eternally in three distinct persons who are co-equal. Um, so that is the basis of the topic today, and that is where we're gonna be. But before we dive into this too much, in order, if we have any chance to understand the Holy Spirit, we need a little bit of Holy Spirit. So I'm gonna pray real quick and we will get going. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the way you do things, for your very nature, for your Son, and for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask that you would fill us up right now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would overwhelm us with an incredible grace and an incredible love, uh, that we would know more about you and that we would have a greater expectation of the Holy Spirit by the end of this hour, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, there's a few names for the, for the Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, referred through throughout Scripture. And I think, um, you know, th these are important that we, that we know this. And so uh, I'm going to read through them real quick and you can see what you think. Um, author of Scripture, comforter, counselor, advocate, convictor of sin, deposit, seal, earnest guide, indweller, intercessor, revealer, spirit of truth, spirit of God, spirit of the Lord, spirit of Christ, teacher, giver of gifts, and witness. Uh, chances are you, per, you perhaps identify with, with uh, or you have your, your relationship is based more on one of these with the Holy Spirit than the other. For instance, if you are going through a hard time or, or tragedy, then you desperately need a comforter and the Holy Spirit is the one that provides that. If you need to move in the gifts, then, you, then the Holy Spirit provides um, the, the ability to move um, in those gifts. And so whichever one of these, or maybe, maybe you get all of them, but these, these are the things that the Holy Spirit does. These are not necessarily who he is, but these are the things um, that he does in our life. And I know as we go through these and as we, as we join a church like this where, where we hope there is a very powerful uh, move of the Spirit happening, sometimes I know people ask this question, how do I know, um, how do I know if I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit, if I'm actually hearing from the Holy Spirit, or if I'm just making this up, and then how do I get to better know the Holy Spirit? So we're gonna talk about this a little bit today. And the, there's a couple, I just have two ways uh, to do this. And the first way is, I mean, it's a typical church answer. It's the Bible. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, all scripture's inspired by God 
and is good for doctrine, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. That is one of his names. This is his book. He took the time to inspire and indwell people so that they could hear clearly what they would have what they should be writing, what they should know, what, they, what, what their people needed to hear at that time and what people needed to hear until the end of time. This is the, this is the Holy Spirit's book. He wrote it and we need to desperately know it. But honestly speaking, this is the current church, not this church, but the current church today is the most biblically ignorant church in history. We don't know the Bible we don't study the Bible. Um, you know, we, and, and, I, and I, for one, when somebody says they hear from the Holy Spirit and it doesn't line up with Scripture, or I know they're not in the Scripture, um, I question it. I don't, uh, I don't fully trust that. That would be like if your grandfather came to you and he said, I've amassed this huge fortune. I've saved my entire life. I have saved and, and, and piled up money and piled up gold and I've buried it. And I've buried it somewhere because I don't trust the banks. You know, old people. And so, so he's buried. He goes, but I've drawn this map to, for you. I've drawn this map and it'll take you right to the Holy. The tithe alone on this will pay for the new church building. Um, you know, so yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And so... Um, so you're like, oh, thank you, grandpa, granddaddy, grand, whatever you call him. And, and you take the map and you're excited. And so you have the map there and you put it to the side and you're like, I'm just going to feel my way there. I'm going to think about what my granddaddy would think and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to find the treasure. I don't know what to call a person like that. I think this guy knows what to call a person like that. <laughs> That's going to hit with a few of you, other you have no idea. Uh, but that's Red Foreman. But anyway, it's dumb. It's stupid to not access the book that he has written, that he has given us, that he has provided us in order to know him better, to know his, the Son and to know the Father. That is the reason. If you want to know the Holy Spirit better, you need to dive and dig into the Bible. And if you don't know where to start, we have a class going here uh, called Going Deeper, first and last Sunday of every month, 9.30, over there. Shameless plug. And then the next thing is, oops. The next thing is relationship. And some of this is how do I have relationship with the Holy Spirit? Well, part of it is, is getting in the Bible. Jesus, uh, Jesus said in John 15, 5, um, abide in me and I will abide in you. And to abide means to hang around, to be around, to simply be near. And that is what it means to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit is that you spend time, that you spend time in his word, that you're, when you're going through his creation, that you take a second and you, you dwell on the goodness of God and on the Holy Spirit's mighty work um, that he's doing. And you ask questions and you expect an answer. And then you shut up and you listen for that answer and you dwell on what that answer might be. And you listen to what others are saying that may know uh, who he is um, all the more. But the, kind of the real question that I want to real focus on today is what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Why is there three persons in this triune God? What, what is, how does this work? How does it make sense? And, uh, and how do we get there? But the Holy Spirit plays a critical role um, in that. So first thing that I want to talk about is what are some of the misconceptions of the Holy Spirit? Uh, you know, because I, I think, you know, you see a lot of stuff going on and some people give the Holy Spirit credit and some people blame the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so that's a, that's a critical difference. But I think for a traditional guy like me, grew up in a, in a traditional church, we're like, oh, he's the weird one. You know, if you got three siblings, one of you is the weird one. Um, so I got three kids, I'll let them figure that out. Um, but... Uh, but that's what, that's what we think, you know, that's, that's like, wow, you know, you think, wow, the day of Pentecost, um, you know, there's people speaking in all sorts of languages, there's tongues of fire, I don't know what that is. Incidentally, the author didn't either, he's like, it looked like tongues of fire, but we didn't know what that was. Or you think about the great, uh, the great Commission, the Great Commission is relatively straightforward, go into all the world and make disciples, unless you read it in the book of Mark, and it says, go and make disciples, they will believe, they will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they will pick up venomous snakes, and they will speak in other tongues. And so, 
Let's be honest, he is the weird one. He does things that are different, that, that's different. We're called to be a peculiar people in this world and he will do the things that are peculiar. Um, not too long ago, Archie, the guy that uh, hosts, hosts up here sometimes, he, uh, he asked my wife to come do, um, his, to lead his small group. And my wife is a very young, middle-aged white lady. Um, and Archie is a young black man. And now Archie's, the demographics of Archie's group is more, is similar to him. He doesn't lead a small group of middle-aged white women. He, he leads a different demographic. And so my wife comes to me and she's like, what do I talk about? I'm like, I have no idea. Um, and so, so she, uh, she studies and prepares like any solid good Christian would do. And she, on her way to this, on the way to this small group, she hears the Holy Spirit say, you should do a trust fall with so-and-so. A trust fall. Now, you don't get a whole lot wider than a trust fall, let's be honest. <laughs> and, and so she's like, what is going on? Look how uncomfortable the white people feel. Um, but she is, so she is going there and she meets with Archie and she asks Archie, she says, I feel like God is telling me to do a trust fall with person B. I don't know which person it was, but it was one of the guys in the group. And Archie, to his credit, said, let's do it. Let, let's do it. I don't know what a trust fall is, but let's do it. <laughs> and so, um, so they do it. And by all accounts, people came up to me and like, man, your wife changed my life in this group the other night, her obedience. Those are the things. And that was simply by being obedient to doing this relatively strange thing in a group that she <laughs> was not normally a part of. So... That is super exciting, but we should expect um, God to do those things, and we should expect the Holy Spirit to move and to guide us in a way that we wouldn't expect. We should have an expectation to not expect, to be willing to boldly go uh, where he would have us go. And the second thing is, it is his job to do for me. So many of us think that it's the Holy Spirit's job to do something for me. That it is, he, he, he's supposed to make me better. He's supposed to guide me towards a, 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 a decision that will make me rich. He's supposed to um, give me the ability to, to heal somebody, um, those kind of things. Or he's supposed to give me these, these gifts. And now, he does a lot of those things. He does do those things, some of those things, but that is not the purpose. If you want to be a better person, you simply spend time with the Holy Spirit and you will be a better person. If you want to, um, to have more boldness and more clarity on what to do, then you ask him and he'll provide it, but that is not his purpose. As a matter of fact, the, the number one sign of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, both in scripture today, is boldness. It's not, it's not anything weird. <laughs> It's not anything uh, strange that's gonna scare the neighbors. Um, it is, well, boldness might scare the neighbors, but it is absolutely um, boldness. And that is what he would have us do. So if you need to boldly proclaim his message, then you need the Holy Spirit. If you need to challenge sin in your own life or in somebody that you lead or disciples life, then you need the Holy Spirit. If for whatever reason, you need to pick up a venomous snake so you can spread the gospel, then you absolutely need the Holy Spirit. If you need to be able, if you need to be able able to lay hands and have a greater level of faith and pray for healing, then you need the Holy Spirit. If you need to preach on a Sunday morning, you better be asking for the Holy Spirit. And if you need to prophesy or perform mighty works, the Holy Spirit is the person of the Trinity that is going to fill you up and do those things. That is what he does. And those are the things that he does, but that's not why he does them. There is a very specific purpose as to what the Holy Spirit's primary goal is and the primary focus is. And so I started thinking to myself, who knows more about the Holy Spirit than me? A lot of people. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the truth. Even as I look across this room, there are people here that have a relationship with him, that commune with the Holy Spirit in a way that I long to someday, in a way that I am pursuing, and that is a great hope of, mine, of my life. But those aren't the people I'm talking about. There's one person that knows the most, and that's Jesus. If you don't, Pastor Mark talked about him last week. Um, but Jesus is telling his disciples in John 16 exactly what the Holy Spirit's going to do. We don't have to guess. We don't have to figure things out. This is exactly what the Spirit of God is going to do um, in our lives. 
And so we're going to read 16, 1 through 15. That's a little bit of reading, but I, I left in 1 through 6. A lot of people wouldn't leave in 1 through 6 because this, this is the bad news part. This is not the fun part. Later, the Holy Spirit, where he's a comforter and an advocate, and all those things are coming. <clears throat> but Jesus is telling him, telling the disciples for a very specific purpose that he is going to send the Holy Spirit. So, starting in verse 1. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. This is Jesus talking to his friends. This is Jesus talking to his followers, the people that have left all sorts of things to, to come and follow him, and, and they're as close as, as people can be. Um, and he's telling them, he's leaving. And he's not, hasn't fully told them everything yet because it gets pretty rough. Um, but he's telling them, and he says, You're not, you don't even care where I'm going, you're just broken that I'm leaving. And that's what, that's what is setting up for his news that the Spirit, that he is sending the Holy Spirit. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. This is a good thing. Even though they can't see it, it's a good thing. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me about righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. A couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I was, I, was, I was on my back porch and I was really starting to put pen to paper on the sermon or, or fingers to keyboard. And I get a text from Pastor Peter. And he's like, hope you're studying hard. And uh, it good, uh, good, the good news was I was studying <laughs> at the time. So if he had texted me a few minutes before, I'd have been like, uh-oh. Um, but then he said, uh, um, people are expecting signs and wonders. And, uh, <laughs> and I told him I didn't have that in my outline yet. Um, but but that, uh, that I was expecting something good to happen. But the great, I can tell you in this right here, the greatest of all signs and all wonders, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, and this is the greatest of all signs and wonders, greater than anything else he could do, is that when the power and the might of the Holy Spirit reveal to you that this world is wrong, that this world is broken, that this world is full of sin and it is condemned, and you're like, well, yeah, that's not that hard to see. Just look around. Uh, I can watch a news feed for about four seconds and know that. But that's not where the conviction stops. The conviction goes into you and you ask, why is this world broken? Why is this world wrong? And it is because of your sin. It is because of the sin that is, that is in your life that is condemning you. And it is an overwhelming way. Jesus said it is more. He didn't tell even his disciples because it was more than they could bear. And in the moment, before that sin crushes you, before the weight of this news, of this revelation, of the shame crushes you and buries you and destroys your very humanity, he points you towards the son Jesus. And he points you towards the cross of Christ so that you can be redeemed, so that you can be stored and restored. And then in that very instant, and that is the instant that you move from unbelief to belief, that's when you move from lost to found. That's when you move from old to new. That's when you move from orphan to son or daughter. It is, this is what the Holy Spirit does. And then in that moment, the son points you towards his father 
and you begin a relationship new with him. That is what the purpose of the Holy Spirit does. Everything else, everything else is incidental. This is what he does. And then only slightly second purpose is then he compels you to get in the game. He compels you to start pointing people towards the cross. He compels you to create opportunities so that they might come to know you. That's why we do everything we do at Northwest. That's why we have make check-in easy for your kids. Um, That's why we have this incredible nursery. It's why we have a coffee bar. It's why we have a greeting team. It's why we have great music and worship. It's why we have engaging and practical teaching. It's why we have encounters. It's why we have small groups. It's why we have a website. It's why we have deacons. It's why we have fall festivals and Christmas shows, why we have a dance studio, and why we're building a new building. All so that you have an opportunity to meet and encounter the Holy Spirit so that he can direct you towards the cross of Christ so that you can be restored and have a relationship with the Father. That's why There are three persons in the Trinity. One, to reveal and to convict you of the overwhelming weight and deadly consequences of sin. Not just sin as a philosophy, but your sin, the sin that besets you and condemns you. Then show you the person and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ the Son so that the Father can run to you with open arms so that we can have a relationship with the one God of this universe, with the creator of all things, with the lover of your soul. So, I don't have any greater works to show you than that, because that's the greatest work of all. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. I was going to have some um, lights go out and thunderous sound and, and, and pyrotechnics, um, but it wasn't in the budget, I mean... They didn't tell me there was a zero budget. (laughs) Um, But what I do want to do is encourage you to expect more from the Holy Spirit. Some people... Some people in this room that I've seen, they had this encounter with the Holy Spirit and in an instant they were changed and they they accepted and they moved from unbelief to belief, from orphan to son or daughter and it was in an instant and they changed in that instant and in other people's. It was like this 20 year journey from I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe, I sort of believe, no, I don't believe. And it's just this process and so the Holy Spirit deals with us all very differently. But if you want more of the Holy Spirit, I'd invite you to stand. If you want more of the Holy Spirit so that you can believe more, so that you can know more, maybe you're just starting to believe. Maybe uh, several years ago, we used to do a three-day encounters and those three-day encounters were, we were pretty serious back then. Um, and we did a three-day encounter and the, still my favorite testimony I've ever heard in my life is a guy said, on Friday, I didn't believe and today I do. That is the greatest thing that we can ever experience. It is the greatest of all works, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is moving within you, causing you to believe, causing you to doubt less, causing you to have boldness when it's, when it's, when it's your time to get in the game and go share with someone that you know you're supposed to. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what he fills you up with. If you need greater faith to pray for somebody that needs healing or that needs restored, that is what the Holy Spirit does. If you need power and boldness and courage in your life to, to, to do the things that he's called us to do, to help him as he has called us and he is the helper, point people towards the son so that the son can point them towards the father so that they can have relationship. I'm gonna pray and I would ask you to, to, to think on those things, on one of those things that you need um, all the more to receive from the Holy Spirit, all the more to, to, to have fellowship with the triune and one God, all to help people be drawn towards him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you that you made a way and then you gave us a whole portion of yourself to point us towards that way. Father, we pray that we would be more in tune, that our hearts and our mind and our eyes would be more in tune and have greater expectation and greater hope of what the Holy Spirit would do in our lives, Father. We pray that you would give us ears to hear, that you would give us eyes to see, that our soul and our hearts would yearn to hear from your Holy Spirit more, Lord. Father, help us to be bold. Father, if you tell us to go, that we would go. If you tell us to stop, that we would stop. 
If you tell us to pray for this person or talk to that person or help this person, Lord, whatever it is, Father, we ask that we would hear and obey, Lord. Father, give us ears to hear your Holy Spirit. Help us to be drawn towards him, to listen, to expect great things, to be willing to do a strange thing if that's what is asked. All so that more people might come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen.